Hey y'all, I hope you're doing well. I think today is the perfect day to make the Eau Suzette crochet dishcloths. This is a very simple pattern, easy enough for my beginners, I think. <laughs> and they're totally customizable. I like to make mine small, about six and a half by seven is what these are gonna be. But you can customize these to make them anything that you need. Perfect for gifts, perfect for your home. They can be dishcloths or they can even be washcloths. So let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. So really, you just want to be comfortable doing a couple of stitches, the single crochet and the double crochet. I will show you how to do those stitches in the project, but if you're not comfortable doing those, you might want to check out my other tutorial, get comfortable with that, and then you can really make this project easy, quickly, and um, you'll really enjoy it. So you will need a few supplies in order to get started. And I'll tell you now, you'll probably want to use a cotton yarn. Cotton yarn is nice and absorbent. So for this project here, I used two different colors. I used the white. This is the Dishy Yarn through Nick Pick, I believe. And then I just had a gray cotton yarn that I picked up from a local Dollar General. You'll need to have a corresponding crochet hook, a yarn needle to weave in all your ends. And then that's it. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. First thing you want to do is make yourself a slip knot along on the screen here. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but my crochet hook is a five millimeter. Okay, once you have that slip knot, go ahead and place it on your crochet hook. And we're going to make a chain in an odd number. That's the easiest way to say it. So you want it to be in an odd number. Technically, what you're doing is a multiple of two plus one plus two for the first stitch. But just so that you don't have to think like all that, just do it in an odd number, okay? So I did a chain of 23, okay? And then what I'm going to do is yarn over, insert my crochet hook into the second stitch from the hook, and I'm going to create a double crochet stitch. And I'll show that to you a few times here, guys. Okay? So that chain of two that I talked about earlier, that serves as your first single crochet, and you did a double crochet. Now you're going to skip a stitch. And in that stitch, you're going to do a single crochet. Okay. In the same space as that single crochet, you're going to do a double crochet stitch. Just like that. You're going to skip a stitch and then do a single, just insert your crochet hook, pull through the loop, yarn over. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the bottom two. And then repeat a stitch in the same space, you're gonna do a double crochet. So essentially, down this entire row, you're going to skip a stitch, then you're gonna do a single crochet and a double crochet in the same space. So go ahead and pause the video and keep working until you get closer to the end, and I'll show you how we finish out the row. Okay, so we should have two stitches left. At that very last stitch there, you're going to do one single crochet stitch. And that is how you complete row one. Chain one, turn your work, and then you're gonna do a double crochet in that first stitch, the same space as your chain of one. That sets up your pattern. So you've had a single crochet, which was that chain of one, and then you have a double crochet. You're going to skip a stitch and into the next available space you're going to do a single crochet and a double crochet. See? It's a repeater row, guys. Okay, a double crochet. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to skip a stitch and in the next stitch we're going to do a single crochet and a double crochet. This is really the pattern. <laughs> I'll show you again. If you pull your work apart, guys, you'll be able to see your stitches a lot easier. Another trick is if you find that you make your foundation chain row a little bit too tight, go up a, go up a, um, a size crochet hook, that way you have larger holes, and then go back down to the crochet hook you're gonna work for your project. You only wanna go up your crochet hook when you make your foundation chain, and then go back down a crochet hook size to work through it. That's a tip if you already make your, if you know you make your foundation chain really tight. Okay, so like is it for example, 
I use a five millimeter or 5.5 millimeter. So you might want to use a six millimeter to do your chain. Okay. So continue working down this row. This is row two, doing a single crochet and a double crochet in the same stitch, skipping a stitch in between and then completing that again. The trick here is just making sure you find the right space to put the stitches, but once you do a couple rows, it will line up easily and this will work really quickly. Okay, and that very last stitch in the row, you're just gonna do a single crochet stitch. All right, chain one, turn your work, and then you'll start in row three. I'm counting my chain as my first single crochet stitch. If you didn't want to do that, you can go ahead and put another single crochet and a double crochet in that space. This is a very forgiving pattern, especially for what we're using it for. So I just stayed consistent and I did one, I did a turning chain, which counted as my single crochet stitch. And then I did a double crochet stitch in that very first space. So go ahead and continue working. You're gonna continue working round three or row three all the way to row 14. So I don't do that on camera. So you would pause your video here if you wanted to and continue working. And then I'll show you how I changed yarn color. Remember, you're gonna end this row with a single crochet stitch in the last stitch in the row. That's what it looks like when you get finished with row 14. So at this point, to add my little pizzazz, <laughs> I'm changing yarn color. And to do that, you're gonna insert the crochet hook just like you were gonna complete a single crochet stitch, add the new yarn, just drape it over, and then pull through like you're doing the single crochet. At this point, you would then pick up the new yarn color and begin doing your chain of one. That's the easiest way to change your yarn. You can always tie the yarn together too. At this point, if you want to tie your ends together, you can do that. Otherwise, just do it when you are finished out the project. And then once you have your yarn, your yarn color change, you'll chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to do a double crochet stitch in that very first space. So the pattern doesn't change. We just change the yarn color. And again, the yarn color change is completely optional. You do not have to do that. It doesn't change the pattern at all. It just adds color if you decide to do that. All right. And then just continue working. I'll stay on camera a little bit longer here just so you can make sure that you have it all down. But really, honestly, guys, that's really the pattern. That's, that's as simple as it gets. It's a repeater row of a single crochet, a double crochet in the same space, making sure you skip a stitch in between each of those two stitches and that's it you want to end with a single crochet you want to start with a double crochet see how that looks so it might be easier if you're just starting out to go ahead and give that a tie right now so that you're not playing with it as you're working along it makes a stitch or it makes a stitch tighter as well so I just tie a little knot. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't affect the project at all. And then when I'm done, I will weave in those tails. Okay. I like this stitch. It's actually called the Suzette st stitch, which is why I call this my Oh Suzette dishcloth. Kind of like a play on the, the song, Oh Susanna. Anyway, so once you're finished, I did a total of six rows in this color. This made the entire project about six inches by seven inches. Very small. That's the size I like to do my dishcloths. But like I said earlier, you can customize this. Just make your foundation chain longer if you want it to be a wider. And then just go up more rows if you want it to be taller or more. Um, the hive to be higher. 
okay I'm just making sure everything's tied off nice and secure I'm gonna weave in on my ends that's where the yarn needle comes into play just want to make sure you kind of weave it in nicely in between the stitches and then just make it look nice and snug if I were gonna make this for a gift for somebody I would go ahead and put a border but for me in my home I don't need a border anyway guys that's it tip off all your little ends and this is the oh Suzette crochet dishcloth obviously a play on the word play on the pattern the Suzette anyway have a great day any questions leave them down below I will see you all in my next video thanks for watching bye